The biogeochemical cycle is a way of examining the extraordinarily complex natural ecosystems on which we depend. One of the things it emphasizes is the path through the system that a specific material may take. Materials cycle through systems in many complex ways. We can endlessly add details to any cycle, but initially it's wise to look at the simplest version and then consider where the details might be added. I'd like to look at a cycle with you. We can construct it. Once constructed, consider what happens when you loop around the cycle. You can see more and more details and appreciate as you move through the details what we're doing wrong that could be perhaps corrected. If we want to examine something that seems to be cyclic, we have to start somewhere on a circle. In this case, let's start at the top. It's a bit arbitrary. Let's consider that there's going to be oxygen in the atmosphere. Let's also assume there will be carbohydrates around for anything alive to consume. Actually, both of these items will be consumed. We consume oxygen when we breathe it in and metabolize. The combination of these two things is usually referred to as aerobic respiration, plain ordinary breathing. Oddly enough, although you probably don't think of it that way, when something is burned, for instance, your average piece of coal, some oil, or a log, that's also oxidation. The coal and the oil and gas, natural gas, will be fossil fuel oxidation. They yield energy. So we have something in common with the average lump of coal. What is released from that process is some water and some CO2, carbon dioxide. You can prove the water by breathing on a mirror. It's a little difficult to prove the CO2. Some things happen that are of interest to all of us with the CO2 and water. Much of it goes into very short-term storage in living tissue. In particular, you've probably heard a thousand times that CO2 is consumed by plants, made into plant tissue in a process we refer to as photosynthesis. This consumes energy, rather the opposite of the respiration which yields energy. These two things go together and we want to realize that they balance. While much of this material, which is now incorporated into tissue, moves along the cycle and continues, a major portion is actually set aside for long-term storage. We see this commonly in two forms. In particular, some of it will begin to go back into the cycle eventually, but it's often set aside for very long-term storage as fossil fuel. Another common storage form is as carbonate rock. The legendary White Cliffs of Dover are a wonderful example. Limestone. As we continue moving along our circle, it shouldn't surprise you terribly to anticipate that what happens next is we release carbohydrates and oxygen from a plant back for consumption by the other side of the circle. If you look at this, you're looking at life in a very abbreviated form, but it pays to spend some real time examining these simple steps. They represent one of the most common biogeochemical cycles. And this cycle is a straightforward example of how we can see that all materials really do cycle. Note that the energy is not really cycling. What happens is some energy is made available as materials are consumed so that the metabolic processes can take place. That energy comes from the sun. Oh, small amounts come from geologic sources. 
But for the most part, the energy that we deal with on Earth is the result of the sun's generosity. If you look as these materials move around the cycle, you recognize some fairly comfortable, fairly obvious things. Energy will build a molecule and be stored in some of the bonds that exist in a molecule. If you break those bonds apart, and we do break apart the bonds when we consume carbohydrates, we release energy. We need it. That's what keeps us moving. But once released, the energy is dissipated. The materials that are left, the raw materials, the water and the CO2, can be stored long-term basis, or they may be passed along as simple water and CO2, made available to plants, and again, with the obvious energy available from the sun, they can be rebuilt into some rather interesting molecules. Oxygen is commonly released, but the carbohydrates that are made permit us to harvest the stored energy that the plants have captured for us from photosynthesis and passed along. And again, the cycle repeats. We can consume the carbohydrates and oxygen, release the energy that was captured in the bond so we can get something done, leave our waste products to cycle again. The waste products are picked up by the photosynthetic process. Some energy is added from the sun. The molecules are built again. They cycle around. We use them. We release the energy, usually as heat, certainly to drive our activities. And the cycle continues. You can go around this cycle endlessly, and sooner or later you will recognize what is perfectly obvious. Materials cycle. Energy flows through. The plants capture it for us, and we release it as we do work. That's what life is all about. It's a marvelous cycle. It's a remarkable pattern. Quite functional. One last thought. In summary. We're looking here at something very important. This cycle is life. Energy must come from the sun. It must be captured by photosynthetic organisms, passed to us so that we can use it and make good use of it and let it dissipate. Materials are going to cycle. They will stay within the system no matter what we do. It is our responsibility to keep them moving, to keep them cycling. Ultimately, this is our answer. This is the basic biogeochemical cycle for our particular world. We keep this one going, and we will be in far better shape 